This is lecture zero, an introductory lecture. It's a, a theory or computer theory type course. Uh, title is Introduction to Theory of Computation. It's a senior M1, meaning first year masters level course. The author of the text that I'll be using is Sipser. S-A-P-S-E-R and here's the text, it's the Chinese version, well the text itself is in, uh, in English There's a, you'll notice that it's Chinese, so if you're if you're Chinese watching this uh, you may be able to get to get this uh, Introduction to the Theory of Computation this is the second edition by, by, by Michael Sipser, S-I-P-S-E-R now uh, it's uh, four, 420 pages. It might not seem that, uh, just by looking at, looking at the judging with my fingers, it might look about I don't know 300 page text. But this is the Chinese version of uh, the book, and the pages the page is extremely thin. It's a rather low quality paper. Now, that's why it was made. Uh, much, much cheaper for Chinese students who are much poorer than Western students and so this is a, a Chinese version so the paper is very thin <laughs> so uh, if I turn to the very last page uh, if I can see a page number um, yeah it's about 440 you know, that's with indexes and index and so on so it's about 420 theory pages so it's a long it'll be a long course because I tend to be rather thorough and cover pretty well everything in the text uh, so this will take several months um, at, at the rate that I'm going. This this is the third course. Or I tend to call them lecture sets because um, everything ends up on YouTube. Uh, so this is the third course that I've given, and it's so this course is part of what I call the Degaris. That's that's my family name, Degaris. Uh, MPC series of uh, courses. Uh, MPC stands for mathematics, in other words pure mathematics, uh, P uh, for physics, so mathematical physics, and C for computer theory. So that's the, the C here. And the aim, uh, if you've not followed me before, given this is the third course that I'm now starting to film, uh, the first two courses uh, were on uh, group theory at uh, junior senior level, you have finite groups, and the second course was on quantum mechanics at senior level, and this one is on uh, computer theory, uh, theory of computation, at uh, senior and M1 level. So I'm <laughs> going out levels a, a bit each time. Now uh, the whole the point the whole point of the uh, Degaris MPC series. You know, if, if I keep doing this for decades, uh, there will be literally hundreds of courses. And the, the point, the aim of the exercise is to bring um, graduate level, so masters and PhD level, uh, education in these three topics, although mostly uh, the M and the P, mathematical, math and physics, pure math and mathematical physics, uh, to the planet for free. That's, that's the idea, you provide free education. So I label myself a free prof, uh, free in several senses. One, uh, I provide education, it's free, so you don't have to pay anything to, to, you know, to learn this stuff, you just teach yourself. Uh, and free in the sense that uh, I'm free, I, I can um, do whatever I like, right? so in the sense of free format, so free in terms of cost and free uh, free format. I can, I can be as long as I like, uh, I can say what I like, uh, I have no constraints in that sense, which is for me personally very nice. Now uh, there's one disadvantage at the moment is that you do not get any credit for it yet. I'm hoping um, you know, once uh, my reputation increases as uh, I get more and more students and word gets out that there's a professor in China, because that's where I live, uh, who's providing graduate level education for free in uh, math and physics and some computing that uh, some institution may uh, do the grading 
so uh, they, they could organize, they could become a, a grading center. So you could send your homeworks and your exam papers uh, to this grading center and they would grade you, they would give you a score and uh, hopefully give you some kind of degree or certificate or, or something. But for the moment, the, that does not exist. The, this whole thing, free education, free internet education is too new, it's still developing. And as far as I know, I'm, I'm the only one who's doing systematically uh, free graduate level, level uh, uh, education on uh, these two topics, math and physics, with some computing. Okay. Uh, now, a bit about uh, motivation, like why, why this course, uh, why computing, <laughs> given the, the primary thrust is uh, math, math and physics. Well, uh, I, have, I have lots of motives. If, if you have not seen, if you have not looked at um, my introductory uh, videos, um, you can go to my website. So, uh, prof, you know, prof just short for professor, because in a previous life, as the Americans say, uh, before I retired, which is about um, two years ago, uh, when I was waging, in other words, earning a wage or a salary, I was a professor, <coughs> a professor of computer science. Uh, my, my research specialty was artificial brains and I was building China's first artificial brain basically by uh, evolving large numbers of uh, neural networks electronically in latest hardware and uh, putting thousands of them together to, uh, and connecting them up in interesting ways to make artificial brains. So, so a kind of network of networks or more specifically a network of evolved neural networks. And I'm supposed to be writing a book on that topic, uh, on artificial brains, an evolved neural net module approach. Um, in fact, I got an email today saying, you know, where's the manuscript? So I still haven't finished. Uh, so um, the motivation for this course in the, gen the very broad general context of, of DGARIS MPC, one of, uh, one of my motives is, uh, besides providing free education, is uh, to see the world become uh, fully democratic so that every country uh, is a democracy. And advanced democracies, uh, experience shows, do not go to war with each other. So have a, having a, a fully democratic world will be much more peaceful. So we can save up several trillion dollars a year wasted on arms and, and so forth, uh, plus all the horrible uh, cost in psychological terms of, of warfare and people getting killed and injured and you know, all that redundant horror that uh, the world can be got rid of. And uh, an effective means to uh, democratize is to create a, a middle class. So those uh, third of countries in the world that are still not yet democracies, uh, I'm making my contribution to the process of what I call de-dictation, meaning getting rid of the last remaining dictatorships in the world. Uh, the, biggest, the biggest one, of course, being China. So when China democratizes, uh, the world will be quite different. Uh, it's a fifth of humanity and in a mere few years will be the world's largest economy in purchasing power terms, just, just a handful of years. So uh, you know, one, of my, one of my goals is to help the education process, help to build up a middle class and experience shows it's always the middle class that pushes for democracy. When you have uh, hundreds of millions of uh, university educated middle class Chinese, for example, uh, sooner or later, they, they will just put enormous pressure on the government to uh, reform itself into a democratic party or just be pushed out of power. I hope the latter does not happen because it's more likely to be violent. There might even be civil war and uh, possibly millions of Chinese killed in a pro-democracy civil war. Yeah. So it would be much better to have a peaceful transition by the party, Chinese Communist Party itself, choosing to 
uh, reform itself into a democratic party and stay in power. They might even win the elections, despite the 80 million odd Chinese that, that it's killed in the Mao, Mao Zedong era. Right. Uh, now, technically, there's also um, another major motivation for me wanting to teach uh, computer theory type courses uh, in a generally mathematics physics orientation. And that is, uh, I'm fascinated by the possibility of creating robust, you know, resistant against noise, robust, scalable uh, quantum computers. Because uh, when the world finally has quantum computers, they will outperform uh, classical computers, today's computers, by, or by exponential amounts. Um, if you have uh, n, big n, uh, quantum bits or qubits uh, in your quantum register, then that uh, quantum computer can outperform a classical co computer by a factor of 2 to the big n, so exponentially greater. So uh, when quantum computers come and they can be made robust, and scalable to large n, then uh, they will utterly eclipse the capacities of uh, classical com computers and they will just change everything. It, it will make it possible for uh, physics and science in general to simulate nature because nature after all is quantum mechanical right? and classical computers cannot simulate uh, quantum systems. Uh, they very quickly run out of memory because uh, you know, uh, the memory requirement goes up as 2 to the n, where n is some measure of the size of your problem. So, for example, if you're a quantum chemist and you add one more atom to your molecule that you're simulating uh, quantum mechanically, then uh, the size of your problem doubles. So, one more atom, one more atom. And very quickly, you just run out of memory in your classical co computer. But with a quantum computer, it, uh, its power goes up as 2 to the n. So the two match the size of the problem and the power both go up as to the n. So uh, that means that your quantum com computer could simulate nature quite mechanically. And that, uh, that will you know, just revolutionize everything. Uh, so um, you know, it's only a question of time then before uh, scalable, robust quantum computers come and then you'll get uh, ministers of um, science and uh, research policy and education and so on uh, calling up the presidents of major universities all around the world in the major countries saying uh, you have to teach uh, quantum computing and particularly uh, a branch of quantum computing called topological quantum computing uh, which is thought to be probably the most likely uh, method or approach to making quantum computers robust, you know, resistant against noise, uh, basically by storing information, storing your qubits in something called topological quantum fields, TQF. Now, the problem is <laughs> to, to understand what such things are, you need a hefty dose of mathematical physics, pure math and math physics.